Welcome to the Splash of Sass podcast. This is the unofficial Jeff Lewis Live after show because I still have thoughts when the show is over. Keep the party going. You can always email me your own thoughts at Splash of Sass podcast at gmail.com. Perhaps I shall set up a little voicemail thing that other listeners can join in on. I laugh because um, I don't think that there's many listeners, but hey, that's how Jeff's show started in the first place. So we're baby stepping people. And this is all just for the love of Jeff, you know, at the end of the day. We love you, pal. Ew. Okay, moving on to yesterday's show, Thursday, April 13th. Ew, next month it is Friday the 13th, and I have a dentist appointment that day, and I don't feel okay about it. I am pretty superstitious. I am, what's that Michael Scott from The Office? I'm not superstitious. I'm just a little stitious. <laughs> Such a good fucking show. If I'm not watching The Office, then I'm listening to Jeff Lewis Live. Okay, moving on to Patrick and Paul on yesterday's episode. Woof, woof, woof. We are starting with... Uh, their dog, Snow White, 90210. I believe it's a little dog. I'm going to guess white because of the name. Otherwise, she was just a princess that was locked in a tower and had eight little people raising her. Okay, so um, the dog. So they brought the dog to the studio. They bring the dog everywhere. And Paul took her out to this grass area to pee outside. And she ran off to chase a giant dog down the street. And so Paul had to chase after her and just stand in front of her and be like, no, don't bark at this giant beast of a dog. And it just gave me instant like cringe PTSD because, well, first of all, I don't like people not having their dog on a leash. And I get that for him. It's like my dog is a tiny little muskrat of a thing you know like it's just a little pumpkin with fur it's not gonna do anything and my thing was always it's not your dog it's my dog that's the issue and it really wasn't my dog it was our family dog speaking of snow white this was a white beach on and it was a fucking bitch on everybody else except my mom like it was so fucking evil it bit my cousin it would bite me all the time me and him would get into it because I dropped him out the window when he was a little baby but um that's a whole nother story and so walking around my neighborhood super cute neighborhood and people with their dogs just in their yard all of a sudden the dog would come running to come and say hi and it was super friendly and the people I'd be like um um and they'd be like oh no it's okay my dog's friendly and I'm like mine's not mine isn't I'm walking a little bitch right now (laughs) and he's actually going to pretend to attack then your dog is going to actually attack and I'm going to be wrapped up in the middle of all of this which has happened before where right Riley's leash would get all around my legs and then I would be entangled into it. I don't want any of this. If you did not listen to my previous podcasts, please circle back because I tell a dog story that this lady died at a dog park by being run over by dogs. So I'm not, I'm not dying by a bitch like that. Like no bitch is taking me down like that. I promise you. I promise you. Oh, I will literally eat those dogs alive. Okay, speaking of pit bulls, I'm not trying to lose an entire section of listeners that are pit bull lovers, but okay, even if a pit bull is nice its entire lifetime, right? But then there's even a 0.0080% chance that it could come out and kill you, you know? Like, it could eat you alive. Like Riley, my little Bichon, it would try to eat me alive. And I would just have taken its mouth and like snapped it. Like, sorry to get graphic. Ew. Oh my God. I would never do that though. I would never do that ever. No violence ever. Um, unless like it, this was, I'm talking about life or death situations. Okay. And so my whole thing is if a pit bull can kill you, 
say you're at a grocery store, right? Like I've been in grocery store parking lots where people leave their door car windows open and there's a pit bull inside the car that could easily just hop right out the window. And I get that they want to give it some fresh air. Like, yes, I understand Rover needs, needs to breathe. Okay. But what if like, he smell what if you smell wrong to him like what if you are the zero percent chance of you had a meat something fall on you i don't know like it was raining cloudy with a chance of meatballs and you got some extra meatballs in your pocket i don't know like what if it just left out and killed you and i don't my whole thing is like i just don't get why we have beasts out in the world that can kill us i don't know we need like bubble suits that just protect us from everything bubble boys so i guess you know patrick and paul they take snow white 90210 everywhere but all i'm saying is that if god forbid snow white was to ever get into an encounter with an unfriendly dog like sorry boys but that's on you for not having a leash ever you know like i get it if 99% of the time, it's all fine. I'm just saying if that 1%, God forbid, ever did happen, like, that's on you, babe. So get them a leash for Christmas. We're just, I only have this podcast so that I can create Christmas lists for everybody, apparently. That's actually a good tip, though. In your phone, in your notes app, just make a present list. And anytime, like, a friend or family member says, oh, I need this or I love this or whatever, just jot things down. Because it's so hard for me personally in the moment to be like, what should I get them? Like, what did they want again? A pile of poop? I don't know. Like, I can't think of anything that they ever liked ever, ever. I can only think about me and what I want. (laughs) Ah, So uh, that's just the tip for the day. Moving on in Jeff Lewis Live, there was a listener, Amy, that was DMing Jeff the night before while she was on a date. I just want to say, disclaimer, that was not me. Jeff does not know about me, although I did have to download ugh, Twitter and Instagram just to promote this podcast, just because I don't know how else to get the word out. And I'm sure Jeff doesn't want the word out, but I want to talk and I have nothing else to talk about. I'm so sorry, Jeff. I love you. I swear. So anyways, the listener, Amy, it could have been me, honestly, because she was just annoyed that, first of all, her date ordered four drinks to her one. Unacceptable. Right then, unacceptable. And then she had to split the bill. And again, a good question came up, like, do you actually split it down the lane Even Stevens, if he's ordering four to her one, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Or I'd be like, you can do tip too. But even though he'd probably only do tip on his portion and then we'd look like little cheapy weepies. So that just sounds like a nightmare on ice and dating. I'm telling you right now, it is, I I am, I could be the listener, Amy. We are living parallel lives because this happened to me a few weeks ago and I've been on so many dates recently that I decided I'm just gonna, I think I'm going to stop asking if they want to split the bill. I don't know if that's rude or like walking backwards and feminism, whatever, but fuck it. Because if it makes me annoyed every single time and it's an instant, like, Sahara Desert down there, if you ever even mention splitting the bill, then why would I even offer? Like, why am I setting both of us up for that when you should just pay, pay, thank you, just pay. Even just the first time, you guys, just the first date, just pay, boys. And I don't know how everything else works for other relationships. And this is just me. This is just me, boys. So (laughs) that's why maybe the dating has slowed down a bit. But I did go on a date a couple weeks ago with this guy. This is the Angela story that I'm about to tell you. My friends and I, we just have so much fun with these stories because now like Angela will forever live on in our lives. And this kid doesn't even know. But so the bill came and I was like, oh, do you want to like, split it. And he was like, um, I mean, we can. Nope. Wrong. Right there. Wrong. Right there. Wrong. But then he fixed it and he was like, or I can get this one. And I was like, better, much better. Uh, but what I actually said was, okay, um, that sounds good. I'll get the next one. And then I was like, but don't worry. Like we'll actually get a next one. It's not, I'm not just saying that to get 
a free dinner this time. And he's like, that's so funny because I was just set up with this girl, Angela, and told that she likes me. So we kept on going out to dinner, but then nothing would happen at the end of the night. Like she wouldn't kiss me or anything. And so after four dinners of her just getting free dinners, I finally was like, all right, Angela, like I I'm done, but I'm done. And she was like, do you want to go to dinner again? And I was like, no, Angela, I don't, I don't want to go out and pay for your fifth dinner. And I was just sitting there starting to like glitch out, you know, like I just started to like shake on the inside and he had no idea. He thought the rest of the night went great. All of this. I never wanted to talk to him again. I politely ended it after this for a few other reasons. I can, there's, there are stories with this kid, but with Angela, how dare you tell me right Before this, you were just about to be okay with me and you splitting the bill. Me and you, the girl that's sitting in front of you that actually likes you, that would do do things with you, unlike Angela. However, now that you just told me this story about you buying this bitch Angela four dinners, four dinners, and she didn't do anything, she didn't have to do anything, you didn't complain, you didn't ask her to go splitsies, and she wasn't even doing anything for four dinners, for four, so I get it, bro, you're tired of paying for free dinners, I get it, but guess what, you shouldn't have told me that story, because now that I know you bought Angela four free dinners, and you wanted me to split the bill, no, absolutely not, nope, you already treated Angela better than me, we're done, we're done, we're done, sorry, you don't get Angela or Amy, sorry, the A-team is out, out, okay, moving on, Patrick got kidney stones, he's on Oxycontin, he got shit-faced at Jameson's party, because his mom told him that beer is healing, I very much agree with that, And this is so interesting, you guys. And this is, again, why I have a podcast, okay, about this. So Patrick mentions that Brandy's husband keeps on buying him drinks. And Jeff, we find out that Brandy's husband's name is Gavin. Gavin DeGraw. No, not DeGraw. But but, um, interesting. Okay, so his name's Gavin. So he kept buying Patrick beer. And Jeff goes, oh, does Gavin agree that beer's healing? And Paul goes, I don't know if he agrees, but there was a lot going on with that guy. And it kind of gets swept under the rug really quickly. But the way that Paul said it, it was as if um, there was more to the story for sure. And as if Brandy's husband was like very into Patrick situation, very about it. I don't know. I'm just saying noted. I noted that and I need to know more. This is exactly what Brandy was most fearful of is bitches like me asking more questions. Like, no. And now Patrick and Paul are talking about her husband on the way. No, this is too much. She hates it. She hates it. We love you, Brandy. We love you so much. But more importantly to all of this was Patrick and his kidney stones, he passed the kidney stone and brought in the actual motherfucking stone as if this is some like uh, geological office, uh, some Arca, what's, um, what are the Arca, Arca Pacalego? Oh my God. I am so losing every brain cell that I've ever not had. What is it? Um, an archaist, an uh, anarchist. What the fuck word? Um, all right. I just had to Google it. Archaeologist. That's so embarrassing. That's embarrassing. But even more embarrassing is Patrick bringing in a fucking actual, you could hit, hear the pebble hit the table. That was unacceptable. That was unacceptable. I hate shit like that. Oh my gosh. There was a girl in my high school. I loved her. She was so funny. And she sat in front of me in math class and she would always have these weird medical things happen. And all of a sudden one day she had white balls falling out of her eyes. I do I need to repeat this like I did not stutter I'm not making this up she had actual white balls falling out of her eyes and when I say white balls I mean like the little beans you would get in beanie babies or like in a beanbag chair Uh, just like those little white like or like a little white styrofoam just a mini little thing falling out of her eyes I have no idea what the end result or why that happened but Can you imagine in my queasiness, I was supposed to be paying attention to fucking Sigma Chi, whatever trigonometry, tri co-star equals whatever Sigma Chi, you're getting roofied. And so 
I could not even pay attention to the life of me. I wanted to vomit the whole time and she would just collect them and put them into a Ziploc bag to bring back to her doctor for further testing. You guys, life has been so weird for me. This is why, again, fucking shit. I need a podcast just because who else? I just need to share these stories. Okay, one of the biggest things happens in this episode. Patrick and Paul drop major tea that I don't even think, again, things were just getting swept under the rug. We didn't really fully address that Patrick and Paul could have stopped Scandaval months ago. They could have stopped Scandaval potentially from ever happening in the first place because they were at the same resort during Sheena Shea's wedding. They were at Sheena Shea's wedding, actually. Um, I love that they're all friends. That's so cute. And so Patrick, I believe, stepped out of the elevator and he saw off to the corner Raquel and Tom Sandoval kissing. And he said producers were also nearby and potentially like, I feel like a lot more people knew about this than they're letting on. There's just, I can't wait for the reunion, but anyways, and I just love Ariana. So, oh, that fucking red dress. Oh my God, girl, girl, are you joking? Fucking slay for every girl that's ever needed a redemption dress like that. Like you are fucking queen right now. I love it so much. But anyways, Patrick, if he had let Ariana know right away at that wedding, like I know he said he didn't want to be involved in all that. And I totally get it. I get it. I'm just saying they casually dropped tea that Raquel and Tom Sandoval were making out at Sheena Shea's wedding in the back corner, not being filmed. And if he had told Ariana, Ariana, then none of this could have happened. Like, who knows? Maybe Ariana didn't want to know and wouldn't have listened to all of that. We never know. The wild will never know. But I'm just saying that is so crazy. And they've confirmed so much within that little tea that they dropped on Jeff Lewis Live, breaking the hot gossip as they always are. This is why we listen. This is why we love Jeff. And I can't wait to recap tomorrow's episode. Okay, everybody. I love you guys so much. Bye. Splash, splash, splash your sails, splash your sails.